What does Crash Bandicoot, SpongeBob SquarePants, Mickey Mouse, Pac-Man, Kirby, Aguan, Sonic the Hedgehog, and the Burger King all have in common? Brand recognition? Lots of fans? All of my childhood money? They all have kart racers. But let's not beat around the bush. In the world of mascot racers, Mario Kart is king. And while we'll all indulge in our favorite franchises soiree into the genre from time to time, it's only those that do something special, something different, something that really makes it more than just, you know, another Mario Kart clone that truly stand out. So what, pray tell, makes Chocobo's racing stand out? Well, if you're looking solely at the racing itself, uh, not much. Released in 1999 by Squaresoft, starring characters like Black Mage, White Mage, a Sid, and a few other familiar faces, Chocobo's Racing is probably the closest thing we'll ever get to an actual Final Fantasy racing game. Though, I don't think that alone is enough to carry it, as it really is just more of a playful spin-off. And while fun, it is still a pretty standard kart racer. The controls are tight, though the drifting mechanics might take a little getting used to for Mario Kart veterans, and the stages are all bright, colorful, and varied, looking really good by PS1 standards. Though they're also really simple. You're not going to be finding many shortcuts or ramps or obstacles of the like. So if it's not the racing that makes it stand out, then what is it? Well, here's a hint. Stop thinking about what you'd expect from a kart racer and think more about what you'd expect from a Final Fantasy game. Spiky hair and big swords. That's right. I wait, no, hold on. No, not the hair and the swords. How I, how I guess that's not not true. No, what I'm talking about is the story, as well as how they utilize it to teach the game's mechanics chapter by chapter. And while yes, Chocobo's Racing offers a handful of modes, including time trials and Grand Prix, front and center no less. Starting with the story is actually the best way to go, and where you'll probably be spending the majority of your time, as it acts as one big tutorial and is required to complete for unlockables. So let's start there. Despite having a fantastic, fully rendered opening cutscene, which was an amazing staple of PS1 Squaresoft titles and really made them stand out during that era, our story is actually told in a way that feels much more reminiscent of watching old Saturday morning cartoons. Tune in same time next week for the next exciting episode of Chocobo Racing! And just listen to this credits theme. Try to tell me you couldn't hear this being the ending for an early children's cartoon. The rest of the music is made up of previous Final Fantasy tunes, particularly the fast, upbeat, and cheerful ones exactly what you'd expect from a racer featuring chibi-style Final Fantasy characters. My personal favorites are the more adventurous, action-packed battle themes. Really gets my blood pumping for a race. Though, if I had to make any complaints about the audio, it would definitely be the sound effects. They can get grating pretty fast, especially the drifting sounds and pretty much all the fat chocobo sounds. And while told like a cartoon, these episodes are actually chapters playing out through a very cutesy and charming pop-up book with fantastic renders and sprites throughout. The story opens up with our hero Chocobo, who's actually had a handful of titles. They're absolutely adorable. Mm. Receiving rocket powered skates. So obviously the first thing you gotta do is what could I do? race, right? That That's it, race. But here's the thing, if you've ever played a mascot kart racer before, just a few minutes in, you'll probably notice that something is a myth. Where are all the power-ups? Not a kart racer without power-ups, can't be right. Also, there are no other racers. Probably should have noticed that first. But that's about to change, as your old buddy and Final Fantasy mascot rival, Moogle, shows up to challenge you for the main character position. And yes, that is actually his goal, which he absolutely pulls off. Moogle really does steal the show with all of his banter, scheming, and constant fourth wall breaking. Hands down, he is the only character who actually makes this story interesting. And while it's all still very childish and predictable, it's fun. 
And with the true star's arrival, the main gameplay loop is set into motion, as we're properly introduced to one of the bigger standout mechanics of the game, and the story's main driving point. Special Abilities which are granted to you via the blue crystal that Chocobo is wearing. And there are a number of abilities to choose from, but you don't gain access to them right away. And after Best Boy Moogle clearly just lets you win, the duo decides to head out on an adventure to find more blue crystals and discover more abilities in a cartoony fashion, as each chapter is basically just Chocobo running into a new character who just happens to have one of these extremely rare and valuable blue crystals. Hijinks ensues, and of course, you race. And after you win, the character you met joins your merry band of adventurers, and you gain access to them as racers, their abilities, and of course, the power-up locked to their stage. So if I beat people in races, they have to be my friends! I've been doing this wrong for years. Hey guys, who wants to race? <laughs> the power-ups here lean heavily into their Final Fantasy roots, with spells like Thunder, Fire, Ice, Reflect, Mini, and even Doom. <laughs> and you're not limited to just one. You can even steal your opponent's power-ups if you give them a nice little love tap. And stacking the same power-up will create stronger forms, like Thundaria, Thundaga, Firearia, Fireaga, you get the picture, which will boost and sometimes alter what each power-up does. Though, I gotta say, it doesn't feel like there's much skill or fairness involved with the power-ups, as they aren't all random, some of them just being out in the open, and a good majority of them are homing attacks too. Expect to be doing well when all of a sudden, you're dead. Still though, once a stage is complete, that power-up will also be there in the next stage, alongside the next one they introduce, giving each race a feeling of progression. Plus, it ramps up the difficulty and unpredictability of it all, on top of consistently adding more opponents to bring down, and more abilities to choose from. Though, all abilities are not created equally. Boosts like Dash or Charge are absolutely OP, basically a free mushroom whenever the gauge in the upper left fills up. And they definitely trump abilities like improved handling or hovering over practically non-existent rougher terrain. No wonder Moogle's pissed. But abilities like stealing power-ups, attack boosters, and reflectors are all still pretty cool too. It's all about how you use them. I am not overcompensating. Though, in a strange choice, the abilities aren't locked to the characters that introduce them. So just pick the character you like and assign them whatever ability you want. Kinda takes away from what makes them special, don't you think? In fact, the game does this a lot, constantly undermining itself. For example, when you beat the campaign, you're given a score that you can use to make your own custom racer. I named him Chocolobo. Get it? Because he's chocolate? colored you get it right anyway the thing is you can only use your custom racer outside of the story like in the grand prix which doesn't sound like a problem except that all the unlockable characters are tied to the story mode squall cloud this police car they're trying to pass off as iabrea when it's clearly outlaw from twisted metal and to unlock all of them you have to complete the campaign Again and again. We are literally talking 10 times to unlock everyone. So wouldn't it be great if we could use these characters, especially our overpowered custom characters, in said campaign to spice things up a bit? And of course, while it is still fun to race, trying to get all those hidden characters will absolutely become tedious. Especially since we all know that the real draw of any kart racer is the multiplayer which, while stuck in only two players, is still enjoyable, but probably won't hold players' attentions for too long, especially not when compared to current kart racers. When it's all said and done, Chocobo Racing, while charming and quirky, is ultimately just a very middle-of-the-road kart racer. It's got solid visuals and music with some interesting ideas sprinkled in, and the story mode does way more than most of its competitors. It's got heart, but at the end of the day, it is all about that multiplayer racing, and Mario Kart is still king. But if you enjoy the Final Fantasy universe, 
need a break from his majesty, or just looking for something a little different, Chocobo Racing might just do the trick.